Hello guys and girls. Well, I've just found a USB cord. Uh, and I've also found a Wi-Fi card. The old style type. Now, I think this laptop has got 32-bit ports on it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, my other laptops over there all from well all Windows 95 era laptops uh, two of them are actually before Windows 95 <coughs> uh, they all have 16-bit ports on which have a different uh, thing on it here this edge here if I remember rightly, 16-bit is the same on both sides, and, th and uh, sorry, wait, 32-bit is the same on both sides, and 16-bit are like this, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I could have got it the wrong way around. I think 32. I think these are 32-bit cards. Forgive me. These are 32 bits. This is the only laptop I seem to be able to plug the card into. Let's power it up and see if um, and see if we get anything out of it when I plug the card in. If it asks me to install it, or if it comes up and says nothing, no space reserved for suspend mode. Okay. I'm really impressed this machine still works. I really, really am. I've got... I cannot remember where I got this from. Looks like I didn't shut it down properly last time. Whoops a daisy. Oh well. Such a small hard drive it doesn't take very long to check the disk. 300 megabyte hard drive. If I hooked it up to the internet it will probably be completely full in a matter of seconds. Let's see if I can get it hooked up to the internet. I should have a mouse. I've got one there plugged into it. Hey, I've got a mouse. You can't really see the screen, can you, very well? Ah, there we go. It's a very blotchy, old-fashioned LCD panel display. And as you move the mouse, you can see the mouse cursor. It's got long trails on it, and it's not because of the setting. It's because of the useless refresh rate on the panel. That's all they could do back in them days. Let's see what happens when I plug this in. Is that the side? No, it's not. It must be on this side then. Yes, it is. I have a very creaky chair. I'll plug that into there. Let's see what happens if it plugs in. Right, it is plugged in. I'm getting no lights on it. <coughs> nothing telling me it's turned on, and nothing on here telling me I have a car plugged in. Now, I'm not expecting this thing to be like USB. In fact, the last time that was used was on a old. Wow, what was the name of that laptop again? I'll have to drag it out at some point in time. It still runs. 500 megahertz CPU with an AMD K6 uh, CPU, I think it was. But that looks like it's not going to work. Yet it plugs in. Uh, the ports inside this, have, I have checked, do look like this kind of port. Uh, in fact, that one... You see, that one isn't the correct type of port. That one's a little bit different, I'm sure of it. Let's look at both of these cards together. Yeah, one's a little bit thicker than the others. Look. Hmm. Yeah, this one here, you can tell I've been trying to plug it, uh, plug it into a uh, the wrong kind. It's supposed to have five volts input as well. But uh, yeah, I know I need to get um, a 
proper card for these. Oh well, it was just a test to see if I could get the internet on this thing. Uh, a friend of mine on Facebook says it'd be funny if you could get WinMX to work on this thing. <laughs> Use it as a little chat, uh, a, a, a web server or something. You know, like a little uh, channel, uh, a channel uh, chat room server or something. Running Windows 95, that would be a laugh. Imagine the lag. <laughs> now, for the record, I have actually had one of these machines on the internet before. Uh, that one there, that one, uh, that one was put on the internet once. Uh, it was that slow. Oh wow! Uh, it couldn't handle anything. Uh, it couldn't even handle loading up pictures. It was that bad. Uh, yeah, it makes me laugh. The uh, our internet connection uh, can download more information to the other machine uh, at the time uh, than uh, what was it than when uh, than the CPU could handle it. If that makes sense, our internet uh, was faster than the CPU. <laughs> Quite an interesting thing. But yeah, oh, it's a shame. I'd love to have got this thing on the internet. But uh, yeah, I mean obviously all the printer and everything works. Oh, I turn the printer on. And there you go. <laughs> If I take the feed, it tries to bring in paper from the bottom. And that just works by lifting the keyboard if I, if I, if I can remember how to do it. I think you just pull it upwards. Yeah, that's right. And then you sit your single paper on that. Close it back down again. It's telling me there's an error. Thing is with this with this uh, machine, um, obviously it it is a a Canon uh, bubble jet. I'm guessing notebook BN one two zero C. I'm guessing A uh, A S F stands for auto sheet feed, as I've seen it on. Right, does you do something when you turn it on? I've seen it on a number of different uh, different printers. I wonder if you can push that. Oh, you can push that down. Maybe I can fool it into thinking there's paper in there. If I click feed and then push that little micro switch down. <laughs> no, obviously not. Nope, it's too clever for that. I cannot fool old technology. But you can see what kind of mouse this thing's supposed to have on it. A handheld trackball. I used to have one years ago, but not anymore. It's a bit dusty. But it's been some years since uh, this machine was ever used in, uh, you know, practical use. It's just been stored for years. I really am surprised the thing still runs. Uh, I actually uh, installed Windows back onto this machine as when I I think when I got it it never had any Windows on it. Uh, it was designed for Windows 95. I'm pretty sure there's a sticker on it somewhere. No, it's just gone to sleep mode. No, it's not good. Yeah, that's probably what came came with it when I uh, had it. I know it originally was supposed to have Windows on it. Well, just by looking at the. Uh, not the thing in there, I mean that looks like Windows based kind of uh, a picture whether it's Windows 3.1, 3.5 or something like that one of the pre-Windows 95 ones I don't know yeah, DOS Oh, we get the weird lines come across the screen. Crazy refresh rates. X copy. 
scan this. What's in program files? Anything good? <laughs> Windows Messenger. Oh, messaging. What was the plus? Oh, no comp. What does that do? Start up disk wizard. No, thank you. I have actually got an old floppy disk in here. Uh, that was from when I used to program my uh, my handheld radios. Uh, I didn't know this was in there. Uh, don't know if it still reads or not. Uh, if you Google Motorola HT600Es or Motorola MT1000s, you'll come up with uh, old police radios, and that's the kind of radio I used to have. I used to run them for years until I upgraded to a, a professional amateur handheld radio. <laughs> Which unfortunately I've sold recently so I can f afford car insurance. Let's see if that, uh, that disc still reads, shall we? Let's go into my computer and see if the three quarter floppy still reads. I'd be amazed if it still reads. <laughs> it does! And I've even got the original program here for it. Let's see if the program opens up. Oh, it's struggling. It's <coughs> doing something. If I remove the disc, <laughs> blue screen. Oh dear. Oh no. Maybe it was just stuck. I don't know. Wow, complete system lockup. Jeez, Citrix CPU, it's really struggling as this that's what this has got in it. I'm not sure of the actual speed of the CPU, but I know it's a Citrix, and I know they've not been made for a while. Use insert disk no name with serial number into drive A. It is in the drive, it just doesn't want to read it. Looks like the uh, the old solar flares have gotten to it. It's been stood down the garden for about five or six years, this laptop has, in, uh, of all things, a wheelie bin with a plastic lid on top of it. So it's had no protection from any solar flares or anything. So I'm surprised it actually still opened up. Oh, no, we've got MT1000. Ha! Huh, well, would you look at that? Press only key to continue. Ah, no, it's failed again. You have to keep putting the disc in and out for it to work. It's telling me to find uh, various things. Ah, oh, it's been so long since I used a floppy disk drive. got to use this program but yeah that's the program I used to use to program my radio my, uh, my radios with uh, it's still a sort after program people still after it but it just shows I should really get doom 95 on this thing shouldn't I and just give it a blast just for old times sake I may actually do it I don't think there's any volume on this thing it's got no speaker system built into it and the old 486, that one there, which is the one I got online, that's got a speaker in it. Um, the IBM has got speakers in it, it's actually got stereo, but it's... Uh, that's dead, that is, unfortunately. It's took an impact at some point in time. I probably one brother and sister were playing down the garden and knocked over the wheelie bin or something. <laughs> Uh, that works. It's got uh, that's that, that's about the oldest machine though. Uh, well, I say that it's got a Pentium One in it, but it's a black and white screen. Yeah, that's got a 486 in it, a 486 DX if you want to know. 
uh, and it's got a colour screen and a speaker which that one doesn't have which is strange but yeah this one was the one I was most interested in I can't remember where I got it from though the only reason why I got it was because it had a built in printer I was like whoa you do not see that every day but yeah only obviously a single cartridge but with it being a bubble a bubble jet it can just fit up with pretty much any old ink so long as it's black ink and it'll uh, it'll print it straight out I used to have an old Canon bubble jet printer and I used to uh, fill it up with fountain pen ink <laughs> it used to it used to print forever that did brilliant thing but yeah I don't know if the thing's any use to anybody but uh, if anybody in the UK wants to make me an offer on this they're most welcome to because uh, it's only going to go to waste I've actually got the whole load up for sale at the moment on uh, on Gumtree. If you uh, look around Derby area, uh, I suppose I could post them, but we'll see. Yeah, so I think. Uh, shut it down. Let's uh, let's shut it down. I think. Shut down. Shut down the computer. Yes. And here's something a lot of people have not seen for a very long time. It is now safe to turn off your computer. You never see it anymore. Huh. Yeah, shame the battery doesn't hold a charge anymore. I think I actually took the battery to bits on this to see what it was made, uh, what kind of cells it was made up of. I can't remember now, but let's have a look on the underside of this machine. Yeah, there's the battery. Oh, there's your Comos battery too. But uh, should I take this apart? I'm pretty sure I did. I don't think. I can't get into it now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I took it apart. It's got like double A's in that. But it's a damn big battery pack. I probably isn't double A's. That's a double A. So it's no, it's not double A's. It's something bigger. It could be a. Not that one. Not that one. Where's my battery tub gone to? It's ran away. That's probably got them type of things in there. A bit bigger than an AA. Yeah, looks like it will fit. Could have three of them in there. One, two, three, possible. I don't know. Well, they could be in that way, I suppose. One. Yeah, I don't know. Plenty of pickles for the power. And the Comos battery. Or CMOS, or whatever you want to call it. And it's still got charge in it. I think it has still got charge in it. You do the quick tong test. Stick the battery on the tong, see if it, uh, see if you can taste like the lemony taste of it. Oh, hello. It's going to come open for us. Oh, would you look at that? It is full of AAs. Huh. Oh, that's one hell of a battery pack. Jeez. Yeah, crazy. Oh, uh, well. I think that's about it for this video. It's been, wow, quite a bit. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace out.